Good morning, Rock Church, my brothers and sisters on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson, and it's the Rock Church Breakfast for Champions. We are here right in the ministry. We got these brothers here. We want to celebrate life with you this morning. We're going to share our devotion. We wish you had come with us, but maybe next, uh, the first Saturday of every month, we meet here at 9 o'clock. We have Breakfast for Champions, and you're a champion. Yes, you are. My brother, you're a champion. We want to invite you to be with us. We're going to pray, and then we're going to get it right into the Word of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for an opportunity to get into the Word of God this morning. Thank you, God, for calling us uh, to be champions. Man, God, I thank you that we are to lead efficiently. But I know we can't do it without the Word of God. And God, I know that we try to do things on our own. We strong men and young men. We strong. We think our muscles is going to make it all work. But God, I pray that we use the spiritual muscles that is divine, that ain't no doubt going to make it work. So God, I pray that everyone on the sound of my voice, God, will begin to exercise their faith today and really do some reflecting on what I individually must do that I have already been called to this wonderful light out of the darkness and now I'm an ambassador to champion God's word. Open up our hearts. Holy Spirit, come on in and order our steps and our stops. May you be glorified, God, in Jesus' name. Let God will say amen. amen. Come on now, Rock Church. Come on, let's give, us, let's give everybody a greeting. Give our hand praise. Come on now. We got some men here. So we got we got young men here. So we got our youth with us, and then of course we got our adults. Men, we just here the fellowship, man, with one another, and just have a real good conversation. Now we're going to talk about something I think is going to help us all. The devotion this morning is called "Remaining a Champion for Jesus." Come on, somebody, remaining a champion for Jesus. As I thought about that, I thought about. How often somebody have called you a champion? Yeah. Have anybody ever called you a champion before? Hmm. Yeah. Don't that feel good if somebody said, Jabari, you're a champion, man. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Yeah, brother Donald, you're a champion, man. Keep up the good work. Man, I can't forget Caleb. Caleb, you're a champion, man. You keep up that good work. Yes, sir, Pastor Ed, you're a champion. Keep up the good work. You can't be called a champion if you don't put in no work now, y'all. I'm just, hey, listen, I'm just here to tell you. You can't be a champion unless you put in good work. How many championships did the Chicago Bulls win, y'all? Six. Six championships. Did anybody give them the championship? No. Was it give it to them? No. no. How, many things, how many games do you have to play before you get into the championship game? You got at least 82 games, right? You got at least 82 games. That means you got to show up 82 times to play a game. Now, I don't know if you got to practice. You got to practice? Oh, you got to practice. Oh, I ain't know. I just thought you showed up and played. But you got extra practice. Oh, how you get there? You just snap a finger and you at the arena? You got to travel, don't you? You just can't pop your hands and you show up, huh? So there's some lead work behind the scenes. Now you may think like a champion. That ain't gonna get you nowhere. You must put in work. And you must compete like the other man is competing for what? The championship. Ain't nobody just giving out no trophies. Come on, somebody. Even if you gave me a championship trophy, I'll look at it and say, what's this for? It's yours. I didn't earn it. I want to earn mine. I want to be in a position to say that, guess what? You ain't gave me nothing. I did some work behind the scenes. I was inspired. I was encouraged. I beat my body. I made some, de I made some dietary uh, decisions. I just, I had to get me some rest. I couldn't stay up all night long to play PlayStations. I had to figure out a way to work the system in order to be the champion. You know what I found out? A champion do three things. They train diligently. It don't make no difference, man, but 
raining outside like it's raining in Chicago. It don't make no difference, man. If the humidity falling down, it's hot outside. It don't make no difference, man. What time? They, some of them depend on what type of athlete you are. Some boxers, man, I see boxers got to get up 3 o'clock in the morning, get ready, 4 o'clock, they jog. Before they even put on gloves. You know what else a trainer, a, a champion does? They persevere through challenges. You're going to have some ache and break and some pains and soreness if you're an athlete. All you got to do is ask Michael Jordan. When he came into the league, he was just as skinny as all get out. He learned, based on how they beat him up, to put some weight on, come on somebody. See, you, you, you make the necessary changes, you adapt based on the conditions that's thrown at you. Another thing a champion do, they never lose sight of the prize. Never. Just imagine if we, the body of Christ, began to hold on to that title of being a champion for God. What are you talking about, Pastor Ron? I'm talking about if you want to remain this champion and this title, you got to put in some work. You got some things. You got to train diligently. You can't forget. And you got to remember, man, the prize is, is, is getting to heaven, man, and being there saying, well done, good and faithful servant. That's the prize. What are you, what are you talking about, Pastor Ron? Let me, let, let's just get into the word of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says it like this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, if you go back, you understand the witnesses that uh, the writer of Hebrew was talking about. He's talking about these other men of faith, the people of faith. They had faith, man. They had something to go back and look at and say, man, look at these people. Look how they live their life through faith and in faith. Yeah. He says, let us throw off everything that hinders in the sin that so entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he scorned, endured the cross, scorned the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Brothers, let me tell y'all something. He could only do this because he knew who he was and what he was called to do. His position. Now, he went through some stuff. Now, we understand what happened in Calvary. He went through some stuff. He had to make some decisions. And he made the decisions. I'm, I got to be diligent in this. I'm going to, not my will be done, but let your will be done, God. And brothers, let me tell y'all. <laughs> the writer tells us we got to throw off everything that hinders in the sin so easy and tangles. Think about what hinders you. To stop training diligently as a Christian. You gotta, you gotta be honest with yourself. Does, does sin, is sin attractive to you? Do you want to touch it? Do you want to kiss it? Do you want to play with it? Do you want to rub it? What is it that you want to do? You want to buy it? He says, man, listen, I need to throw off everything that is hindering. I can't imagine, man. When they were running, man, the bulls were running for the championship glory. Back to back, back to back trophies. They had to throw off some, some things that they wanted to do, man. But they taste what it was like to win a championship. When you get one, oh my God, you want another. Then you want another one. You want it until you can. You want what they have, not even being called a champion no more. You want to be called a champion of being a dynasty. Come on, somebody. Because you know, taste what it's like. You know, this 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 dynasty is is elite. This is an elite group to be in. They took over. Sin would take over if we allowed it to. It'll defeat us. And the only way we can get away with not allowing it to defeat us, so we can live the championship life that God intended for us. The Bible says, let us run with perseverance. In other words, you ain't finna give up. Although you, you want to, you, you, you in your feelings. The feelings make you want to dip and die. But the spirit man says, oh no. No, 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 no. I'm going to do something that 
uh, most people may not consider, I am going to persevere through these challenging times with my flesh. I'm going to persevere because I know at the other end of this thing here, I got something waiting on me. Yeah. See, see, we're not in, in a class all by ourselves. We, we, we have one another. You all are watching. You have the body of Christ to lean on, to see action. And if even if you can't get connected to the body of Christ, you can get connected to the word of God. That's why the word of God says we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. We, we got brothers in, in front of us, and we got people who will live this, mark this race out that has been written about that we can glean from and go back and understand where they were at, how did they overcome and be where they're at today, okay? And we can read these stories that's in the word of God. But when you're running, you got to remember that the race were marked out for you already, okay? Like he trailed the blaze for us. He said, hey man, you don't have to recreate the wheel. It's actually, it's created for you to walk through it and walk in it because there's nothing new under the sun. We, we're not going to have a new word of God created for us to say, oh, this Bible suits my flesh. No, the word of God is going to help us to deny our flesh. Right? The Bible is going to suit our spirit. Man. And so, this, this is marked out. But, but listen, even though you're going through the training process to be the champion and become the dynasty, he said, it's, it's not happening for some of you all, like me, who wear glasses, you know, oftentimes depend on how how, 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 how how much you need your glasses. Maybe your glasses is laying by the table, you know, at your house, and the first thing you do, you wake up and you put your glasses on. Come on, somebody. Yeah, because you're trying to get your fix together. You're trying to be able to see. Now, you're trying to see at a place you've been living at for over five years. Why you need your glasses on to see where you already live there? Because you, you know that this works. Okay? These works. You may be familiar with your surrounding, but it's not like clarity. When you're running the race and you're understanding your, 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 your goal, you're understanding the end. You got the end in mind. You're a champion. You created to be this dynasty for Jesus. The only way that works is the Bible says, fix your eyes on Jesus. There's a fixing that has to happen. We don't get to take our eyes off. And, 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 and anything that will tempt you to take your eyes off Jesus is going to try to wreck the spirit person. It's going to confuse you. It's going to touch your, your, your emotional feelings, which will cause you to be hindered instead of thrown off things that hinders us and the sin that so entangles we actually receive the sin that so entangles because we in our feelings because we decided not to put our glasses on come on somebody to see Jesus and this is something that I think we as champions need to be reminded now, I, I know this for a fact that the Bulls did not win six championships on their own. They had an unbelievable coach and a coaching staff to work with you. Hmm? There were things that the coach did methodically in order to get a person's mindset to be greater than they think they were. They had to help a person to reach and play their parts and understand everybody don't get to take the last shot. You got a guy on the team that's going to always take the last shot and you ain't going to do nothing about it but give him the ball. And if he decided to pass, then so be it. I done seen championship when Jordan, you know he don't have the ball. Everybody in the arena know he's going to get the ball. 
And ain't nobody going to do nothing about it but try to stop him. And he's just going to go to another level. And a champion always don't think about themselves. They're thinking about the teamwork. Make the dream work. Remember that one of them championship where Jordan had the ball? He told Paxton, Paxton on the bench, he said, be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Jordan had the ball. Man, look at here. And man, they all came to him. And what did he do? He told the man to be ready. He gave that man the ball. That man shot the three-pointer. And man, there we go. There's another championship. Believe it or not, I'm the Jordan here to tell all y'all be ready. I got the ball. God has given me the authority to take the shot. But I can't do this without a team. Be ready. You the champ. Be ready. You on the team. You everybody don't got a role to play. You watching, you got a role to play. Hey, listen, the man of God that's in your life, that's the MJ. He's training just as hard as you training. I'm in the gym like you, man. I got my, my Bible open just like you. I got to do a little bit more than you. Because I was elected to do that. Now, maybe you can preach better than me. and Maybe you can read better than me. Maybe you can smile better than me. But you ain't the MJ. <laughs> Come on, somebody. There were better players at times with different skill sets on the Bulls, but they weren't Michael Jordan, though. No. Michael Jordan made the team better by, guess what, building the team up. And you realize there's no I in team. In order to be the champions that God has already ordained you to be, it takes the MJ to see it in you, to call you forward. I'm calling you men forward. You young men forward to play your position in the, in the kingdom of God. You got a position. You're going to get the ball every day. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it when it come at you? Oh, I give up, Pastor. I'm tired. No, you can't get tired. The Bible says you're not going to weary and well doing for the proper time you're going to reap a harvest and you faint not. You can't get tired on the job. But you're a champion. And oftentimes, brothers, when we think about whatever sport you're into, the end goal of every sport is a championship. The end goal for each and every one of us is eternal life. And to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ as we were commissioned to the world. Let me give you a couple of benefits as you fix your eyes on Jesus. Number one, you will receive spiritual growth. That's what happens. 2 Peter 3.18 says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory now and forever. If you, if you are in the game, you are growing. In other words, you've got to be in your word. You have to be in your word, man. The word is the basketball. You want to keep dribbling? Get the word in you. There are different plays that we could call the hive, man, and we'll be ready to pour at any given time. There's a play for each and every one of us. In your spiritual growth, it will teach you how to talk to people. Ephesians 4.15 says, instead, speak the truth in love. Talk to people in love. Hey, man, listen. It's going to be a season in your life when you feel fatigued. The Bible says we will grow and become very, it says, and we will grow to become in every respect a mature body in who is the head that is in Christ. You will be fatigued, but you're growing and you're maturing. Fixing your eyes on Jesus, spiritual growth. Number two, you have this peace and this assurance. Thank you, God. See, John 1, 14, 27 says, peace I leave with you. That's an encouragement to me. You know, when you see basketball, you see Jordan, them man, hey, man, listen here. When them boys making shots and doing their thing, what they do most time, man, hey, they hit them on that butt, don't they, man? Let them know, hey, what a play, boy. Hey, you did it, man. Hey, nice looking out. Hey, thank you, man. Teamwork. You know, that's a sense of encouragement, man, when people do that when they're playing together. That's a sense of peace that happens. 
Yeah, I feel good. I'm good, man. My man just told me I'm good to go. Jesus said, guess what? I left you that. I'm hitting you back here all the time. All you got to do is follow, man. Do what I'm telling you. He says, my peace I give you. He says, listen, not only that, I do not give you as the world gives. The world gives you temporary so-called peace. Don't do what the world says. See what they do there. Turn their back on. The world won't give you no grace and no mercy. But being a champion for Christ, he does. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. Here's the reason why. Because in Isaiah 26, 3 says it like this. You will keep in perfect peace those who mind. You got to have your mind in this game. This mind of what I'm called to be in the kingdom as a champion created to be a dynasty because I'm going to heaven. It don't get no better than that. It don't get no better than going to heaven. He said, but the mind's got to be steadfast because they trust in you. Y'all, you and I got to trust in this, what I call basic instructions before leaving earth, which is the Bible. That's the playbook. That's the playbook for life. Check it down, man. Get in that playbook. You want to know what God's saying? You ain't got to go too far to figure it out. You probably just got to go in your bag or your counter or your table. Open it up. Playbook is right there. The third thing you do when you fix your eyes on Jesus, you got freedom from fear. Yeah, man, it don't make no difference how good things seem to be or things are not working out in your life. The Bible says in Isaiah 41.10, so do not fear, for I'm with you. I wonder how many times Jordan had to tell them boys, man, B.J. Armstrong, B.J., I know you little, man, but shoot the ball. Some of y'all may not know B.J., y'all Google that, don't worry about that. <laughs> Just Google it, man. If you don't know B.J. Armstrong, that little short joke, I'm going to shoot your lights out. How many times you think Jordan had to tell Craig Hodges, Craig, that's your shot? I didn't think Craig seen a shot he did not like. That joke was a three-point killer. But guess what, man? We all need the encouragement. The Bible says, listen, I want to encourage you. Don't not only be afraid, but don't be dismayed. Because you blew it. Don't be dismayed because you you've been you know you've been on the sideline and you 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 done found yourself crippled because of the sin you've been entangled with. Don't be dismayed because you got a cast going on on your body because you feel crippled. It's crippling you because sin does cripple and contaminates. He said, "Listen, don't be dismayed. Here's the reason why. For I'm your God. I'm with you. Go back to the foundation. I will strengthen you." That means you are weak if you need to be strengthened. And I will help you. That means one day you're going to need help. I will uphold you. With what? With my righteous hand. My God. The hand of the Lord is on his champions. Then you'll learn the fourth thing, I believe, as we fix our eyes on Jesus. You'll learn strength in trial. You can be strong in your trials. You don't have to give in to the trials and temptations because they are there before you. Paul said it like this in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Come on, man. There ain't nothing wrong with coming off the bench. I want to start, Pastor. Only five people can start at one time in basketball, y'all. Everybody don't get the ball. Some of you all got to be like Dennis Rodman. Now, don't dress up like him. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Some of us got to go get the ball, man. Go get the rebounds. Some of us got to be right there, man. Do the grunt rope. Whatever it takes. Everybody, man, listen. The team wins when the team come together. We champions for the kingdom. You gotta win, man. You gotta think about we are winning for Jesus, man. Satan got all his soldiers out here, man, on fire, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, man. They on fire. They don't know. They on their way to hell. We coming up. We, man. We doing things our way. Okay. 
But champions for Christ are going to always do it the right way. He says, Paul said, therefore I will boast all the more glad about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. I don't care what the situation like, man. You're going to get tired. But guess what? The power of Christ is going to rest on you and give you the ability to keep going forward. And lastly, we talked about spiritual growth, peace and assurance, freedom and fears, strength and trials, and last but not least, transformation of the mind. This mind needs to be transformed. You are on the right team. You was drafted when you said, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. You signed the contract right there. The problem is, maybe we didn't sign the signing contract with the enemy. Tear that contract up. <laughs> Say, no, 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 that's up, no, let's go in. That, that ain't going to work right now because I got the real contract. Because the Bible says the way we transform our mind in Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the patterns of the world. What your neighbors are doing, what your friends are doing, what you're seeing them do on TV, all the things that inspire you that's in the flesh, don't be a person that conforms to that pattern. It says, but be transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. Why do you think that these guys play 82 games, there's a whole lot involved in it. For an example, before every game, they have to read, they have to go look at film. They have to go sit down and look at film. Look at the plays that the other team were playing and the last time they played them, how did they play them? They have to dissect film. They just don't get up and put a ball in their hand. That's the last thing they do. <laughs> you know what I mean? They they try to figure out, man, we ain't beat we ain't beat this team in a long time. How do we beat them? Well, see, at one time, in order to be a champion, you had to go through Detroit, Pistons. You had to go through them boys. They had to look at film to figure out how did we beat them. Well, we got to first get some muscle. <laughs> they beating up Jordan. They knocking him around. All that came from looking at film, and they had to, what, transform their man. They had to have a mind renewal. You can't just want to have a championship and, you, and you're doing the same stuff and think you're going to get new results. That's insanity. You have to change, have a mind change in order to have habits to change and behavior changes. I'm a champion. So let me ask you, I'm a champion with Jesus. Let me make sure my mind is changing. Because my actions will. And the Bible says, then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is. God's will is good, it's pleasing, and perfect. That's how you reach the dynasty level. Following the will of God. And the dynasty level is eternal life. Then with God in heaven. You guys are champions. You all are watching. You all are champions. What are we going to do about that? Colossians 3, 2 says, set your minds on things above. Huh? Not on earthly things. Things above. Pastor Cliff, would you close us in prayer, please?
and to open up wide and speak the gospel truth to those who bring them in. God, we pray for safety, health, healing, and, and uh, salvation, deliverance, and all the families of all these men. So we pray now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And amen. amen. Let the men of God give God a hand praise. Thank you all for watching. I want to thank you all for considering sharing this message. I want to invite each and every one of you all to come to church with us. We're located 5628 West Washington. We're on the corner of Washington and Parkside. Our services start at 1030 promptly. We open up our doors at 10 o'clock. Come on in. You all are welcome. You all are welcome. We love God. We love people. We love to serve. Come on, worship with us. I'm Pastor Robert Lewis Stevenson. This is the Rock Church family. God's blessings on you. I'll see you tomorrow.